So it's your testimony before this committee under oath that no one in Connecticut needs to leave any, anywhere. From, we're, we're, from, uh, from any a serious uh, d destruction of, of Indian Point uh, does not require anyone from Connecticut to leave. I think it would be exceedingly unlikely that anyone, Connecticut, anyone living in Connecticut would have to take an action as a result of an accident at Indian Point to avoid acute health risk. I was so ready to leave this panel and get on with life here, but <laughs> is that your view, Mr. Renz? Um, I, I, I think you're asking a site-specific question with respect to any point that I'm yeah, not but, familiar but, but, with. If, you know, I'm asking if a selectman it's a community 24 miles away from, from a major nuclear power plant. Sure. And I've just described to you a scenario that um, this plan has been destroyed. And, and I'm, I'm hearing an expert say folks in Connecticut 24 miles away don't need to be concerned. I, th I think everybody needs to be concerned. I don't know that um, based on your definition of, of destroyed, your, your, your worst case design basis accidents would not have you have any concern at 24 miles from, a, from an acute exposure standpoint. There would be, as I understand it, no need important. for protective actions. It's very important actions. for you both to put this on the record, because um, this will be, uh, we'll probably have uh, another hearing just on this whole issue, because this fascinates me. Ms. Howard? I mean, and this is what you believe, and you may be right. Uh, uh, you're the experts, right? Uh, and, and, but it, 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 it my, my view is, from everything I've learned, it, it's hard for me to, to put what you're saying in the context of what I've learned. Ms. Howard? May I, may I offer yes. a suggestion? Sure. Uh, there are documents that describe some of these consequences. Uh, scientific documents such as uh, New Reg 0396, which describes the consequences from a very large release of very serious accident at a nuclear power plant. And it talks about the radiation exposures and the, the dose consequences and the health effects. Mm -hmm. And it was, in fact, one of the documents that was used to define the size of the emergency planning zone. And so when I think of something like Chernobyl, I'm just thinking of something totally unrealistic, nothing like that, whatever. That's you're going to be your, your view. Ms. Howard, I'm going to get down to the n other gentleman. Yes. Well, certainly let me comment on your comment on Chernobyl. No, don't, not yet. Do the other one first, and then we'll do the Chernobyl. <laughs> uh, I, again, as uh, uh, Mr. Slobodin has mentioned, there's a scientific basis for the inventory that could be released, the emergency planning area where evacuation or some type of protective action should take place is deemed less than 10 miles. We've kept it at the 10 miles. The 50 mile is from a standpoint of looking at over time and monitoring of any dis disposition of uh, radioactive isotopes from a standpoint of food or water supply. Do you agree with what, what Mr. Renz and Mr. Slobodin have said? Yes, that, I do. Uh, that you, you, basically the only thing you have to be concerned with is, is what's in the 10 miles and 24 miles away, you don't have a problem. I don't want to put words in anybody's uh, mouths here because this is, point, this point, is heavy point stuff. Clar point of clarification. Um, the, the, one of the assumptions that lays the basis for the 10 miles is that if you plan out to 10 miles, you have uh, an established infrastructure that you can expand upon should the need arise on an ad hoc basis. So that the, the planning, the, yeah, the but assumptions but do but not... Mr. Bond doesn't need to know about that because he's 24 miles away. Um, he would be advised on an ad hoc basis at the time. I mean, it is, it is so unlikely that you would have a protective action outside of, uh, anywhere outside of 10 miles. Yeah, and it's so unlikely that people from that area wouldn't come to, uh, to, um, to New Canaan, which is, I'm being facetious now. That's a function of public information, public education. No, it's, a, it's, a, it's a function of public reaction to exactly. a disaster. Exactly. And you and I know that the public is not going to sit by because two experts came to a panel and said you don't need to be aware, afraid, that, you know, and I don't, and, and, and if you, if, if, if we should be saying to people, they don't need to be concerned unless you're 10 miles or in, uh, I just want to make sure that, that I'm not practicing bad medicine. Mr. Matheson? Yeah, I think it's important to note that a few of the other panelists have made reference uh, a couple times to acute exposure. And I know that Mr. Slobodin in uh, the newspaper uh, around our area in Westchester uh, was quoted 
as admitting that the evacuation plans for Indian Point really are designed to protect against acute uh, illness, i.e., uh, shorter term illnesses and, and perhaps death within a couple of days or a couple of weeks. Um, and in fact, the NRC's own studies as recently as a year or two ago uh, cited the effect of a radiation dispersal event as a result of a spent fuel fire. And they said that you would have tens of thousands. Uh, potentially tens of thousands of long-term uh, cancer-related deaths as far away as 500 miles, uh, up to 500 miles away from a nuclear power plant. So I think that that does fly in the face of, of what uh, uh, these folks are telling us. Um, I also, just to, to mention about the wind direction, I think that Mr. Slobodin is right that at the lower altitudes, the wind does tend to go north or south up and down the Hudson Valley, but the higher altitudes, it tends to go west to east. Uh, and therefore, in most cases, uh, head towards Connecticut, sometimes a little north, sometimes a little Mr. south. Mr. Lockbaum? Well, I guess I'm a little bit skeptical, uh, particularly at, at the same time. Skeptical? I'm uh, skeptical of what? The, the energy claim that uh, only people with living within 10 miles would have to uh, take any action for their protection. I, I think if that were, if there were a strong basis, in fact, for that, the industry and the NRC wouldn't be before the, be before the Congress asking for renewal of the Price-Anderson Act. You know, until the industry is willing to back up its words with its money instead of my money, I'm going to remain a little bit skeptical of such claims. Refresh me, Price-Anderson Act. Price-Anderson provides federal liability protection in case of a nuclear power plant accident outside the fences. Um, and well, but you, you, you know that sometimes people sue even when they don't have a right to, so you understand that, you know, well, the, the in deference thing, to... The neat thing about Price-Anderson is you don't have to establish fault. You just have to show damage. Right. Um, so it, it, it okay. alleviates some of the, the high burden of uh, I, I, typical I, lawsuits.